It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, you can see in that sharp interactive board, I brought back Chris Pollock of Pollock and Pollock. You know, ladies and gentlemen, over the last, well, it's been a couple years now, this crazy pandemic, our industry has been stretched to unimaginable positions. Supply chain issues, supply shortages on our consumable product called toner. Chris Pollock and his team have experienced things that they haven't experienced for a long, long time and never at this level. And today I want to talk a little bit about some of the supply chain issues we're having in the marketplace and how that's affecting the global supply of toner and products going into your end users. Chris, how are you doing? It's great to have you back on, man. Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you for thank you for inviting me back on, Ray. Nice to see you. Well, Chris, I will tell you, today I am actually drinking coffee. There is coffee in here, folks, this time, out of your out of your mug you sent me. I appreciate that. That's good. You're welcome. I'll, I'll bet it tastes great. It makes the coffee taste so much better. But, you know, there is a there is a bad taste in the mouths of a lot of our dealers, speaking of that, around, around supplies. I mean, it's been a really tough issue, and, I'm, you know, you're on the front lines of this, but... You know that we've had a, a the OEM that had the fire, and they have they've had their issues impacted by a virus. I mean, it's just been a nightmare. But you know, over the last since we've last talked, let's think it was about three months ago or so, is it getting any better, or are you still finding yourself in a position to get new dealers for the very first time because they're forced to do something different? Yeah, well, I, I can definitely say it's crazy, and it's been you know varying degrees of. You know, things being better or things being more difficult. Every OEM's had their issues with the supply chain over the, you know, since over this past year. And, uh, you know, there are a few of them that are starting to make some headway, but uh, everybody always seems to slip back at some time or one or another. You just never know when it's going to happen. I mean, obviously, the the biggest experience that we had was with uh Conica Minolta, because if you had mentioned what the fire that they had late last year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that just really threw another curveball and, you know, set that, set them back further than any of the other OEMs. So that was, that was a real scramble to help dealers out there it was, uh, we, we did as best we could to, uh, increase on that, but, uh, you know, it, it's difficult for one company just to pick all that up, but, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, Kataka Minolta was uh, a little bit grateful that uh, companies like Pollock and Pollock and other companies were able to help fill that gap because uh, you know, they certainly have plenty of angry dealers on their hands. You know, I want to. I'm putting a, less of the blow a little bit. For that. I'm putting the clap together for that because you know you brought up an interesting point. You know, the OEMs, of course, they don't like the non-OEM brand people. Oh, no, no, only buy OEM. And we've all heard the horror stories that blow your machine up and all this crazy nonsense. And over this pandemic, we've seen Canon, you know, you know, teaching people how to bypass the chips because they couldn't get OEM tone or go ahead, it's okay to use it now. But I think yeah. you brought up a good point. In, in a world where, I mean, let's all be honest, and I say this a lot, you, you know, Chris, the, 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 the non-OEM supply business is like 25% of the business. It's been that way forever, and it's not going to change. And now, obviously, during this crisis, you you were able to, and, and folks like you, were able to increase their business model. And if it's a good thing, number one, that you had the ability to increase your business model because you were able to help the most important person in all of this, which is the end user who buying all these products. I mean, the most important person is not the OEM. The most important person is not you. The most important person's not the OEM's toner, it's those end users and, and organizations like you helping them out. So that's a great point to bring up, and I'm glad you did that. But here, I want to ask you a question, Chris, because, you know, the financials for the OEMs are coming out. You know, and I, I did a video last week where I was talking about how Conica Minolta, and I, and I almost sound like I'm picking on Conica Minolta, but they do have a lot of issues. But they, you know, they, they downgraded their expectations on their operating profit. We'll see what the actual number is. But they've struggled over these last couple of years. And, and I was looking back in time, and I made a comment in that video that maybe some of these OEMs just go away. And I'm not saying Conica Minolta is going to go away, but they could. They could just say we're done with the print business because it's happened in history. It happened with Panasonic, and that's... That's kind of where yeah. I wanted to position this at, is that if, if one of these OEMs just decides to shut down, you know what, we're doing all this other businesses that we've diversified into, the print's not that relevant anymore, we can't make any money on it, let's just get rid of it. Yeah. Do, do you think that could happen again like, like Panasonic? Well, it's very true. I mean, I'm, 
we had firsthand experience that with ourselves. When you talk about Panasonic, the, the late 2000s, they just decided that they were going to uh, get out of the print business. That once they sold the rest of their stuff, that that was going to be the that was going to be the end of it. And back at that time, it, we were actually uh, you know Panasonic was a strong brand for us. We probably did business with eighty percent of the Panasonic dealers, even though it was a, a niche type market. So uh, even for ourselves, we had to scramble with that to think about well, where are we going to go from here what are those panasonic dealers doing we need to pay attention to that and start looking to help support them uh, but it also gave us an opportunity of helping those panasonic dealers because even when the oems decided to exit right away all that equipment didn't go mm -hmm. go right away out in the field so they still needed uh support to some degree and uh you know, we were able to help a lot of those dealers out until they had transitioned to a different brand and uh you know had those machines go out and frankly i was uh i was really surprised that uh you know the business even continued that we were supporting them for you know probably almost two years longer than i thought it would have mm -hmm. that i thought it would have gone so you know, we're actually paying very close attention to see if something like that happens again that if you know we can go and help support those dealers because i you know, I, I know what to expect from that. Well, I think the dealers just have to wake up to realities. I mean, there's, look, you can be as loyal as you want to any OEM on the, on, the, on the table. We all have our friends. But at the end of the day, the industry is going to consolidate one way or the other. It's just going to consolidate. It's either going to be through some arrogance of an OEM or thinking they can do it on their own. It doesn't do anything and goes away. It's going to be the fact that they go into the marketplace and change who distributes for them because of different alignments. And so you're gonna have pain at the dealer level, you're gonna have pain at the OEM level and not understanding how to fulfill the needs of those end users with the equipment, it's not gonna be a good place to be. And I, So I just wanna recap from your perspective, you do all brands pretty much, you can provide the A3 and A4 total for all brands? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much most of the brands are, we'll, we'll you know, we're, we're, nobody's gonna have the, fullest line like the OEM. So mm -hmm. we, we focus on the items that are most important that the dealers need and will use. And, you know, if we can do that to deliver and help save them money and do it profitably, then that's where our focus is. I'm going to ask you a question. You probably can't answer it. I might've asked you this before, but do, do you have OEMs reaching out to you, Chris? I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I'm going to have to go back to Konica again, but they, you know, and I, I kind of did a little satire video, which I'm known for every once in a while, but where they were telling the dealers to dump the bottle toner out of one bottle into another bottle and all this crazy nonsense. And and I'm thinking to myself, did they reach out to you around that time and say, hey, would you dump the toner from one bottle into the other for us so dealers don't have to do that? Or are those kind of arrangements so far-fetched that no one would ever, you know, do them? Well, I would say with the, those types of behaviors of uh, taking toners and you know, moving them, you know, moving them from one bottle to another bottle. That's that's definitely something that the dealers, uh, you know, wouldn't even imagine doing. But uh, under these circumstances, they were in some cases forced to oh, keep yeah. the mm -hmm. machines running. But uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we we do have, uh, you know, we have had OEMs reach out to us in the past from time to time, and you know, we you know, we also have a lot of those uh, OEM branches that. Uh, you know, will do business with us, especially, you know, if they were a former brand mm -hmm. of OEM that that dealership was prior to uh, you know, becoming an OEM branch. So uh, when emergencies like that arise, uh, sure, we'll get we'll get questions of, uh, you know, do you have this toner that we can fill in because they have an emergency and they already, you know, they already work with us. So. Yes, that does happen occasionally. Can you imagine the conversation in those offices? So you got the direct operation. You know, yeah, go ahead and get the toner from Pollock and Pollock or whoever the flavor is for, for all the machines that are our brand. But don't ever use anything that's not our brand, <laughs> our machines, because it'll blow them up. It'll make them terrible. And we don't want that to happen. I mean, folks, at the end of the day, I'm hoping, Chris, through all of this pandemic, that the world finally realize that the toner is not going to ruin your machine if it's coming from a quality producer that's been around for decades, you know, solving problems for dealers and helping them increase their profit. Do you think at least we're there? Well, I, I think the awareness has started to come there. I think the, the, for the independent dealers, the silver lining with this is that, 
because of an emergency, a crisis, they're starting to see that these alternatives work just as good, you know, some cases even better, and that they're saving a lot of dollars. And they see with particular customers or fleets of machines where this really benefits their dealership. And it's an important thing for them to be aware of to save dollars because it's not just what they save from buying an OEM product. What's happening in their business now is that inflation is happening all around them in every aspect of their business. And it's difficult to keep up with that. And, you know, this is one way to help combat against that. Let me ask you this question because it's going to be a big topic. It'll be a big topic on the end of the day with Ray going forward. But we're in a climate of geopolitics that's pretty, pretty tough right now. I mean, we've had some some great friends and relationships, and I'm going to go into the China market at this point. And, and obviously that's going to get pressured now, you know, with this crazy war in Ukraine and who's siding with who and all that nonsense that goes with it. But these are these are real life scenarios. There's no doubt about it. And I don't know, you know, I just wanted to ask, does Pollock and Pollock do anything with with, with China? Or, I mean, you guys bring in any any toner from China? Um, yeah, very, very small. It's really not. A, we have a lot of ours that are made in the U.S. And, you know, we uh, you know, Lexmark is a popular one that we you know, have a remanufactured product. Uh, that helps that helps with that but uh, you know it, it's going to be interesting to see how you say that this uh, this plays how this plays out I mean uh, you know if you want to talk politics about it I mean mm-hmm. you know we're coming up on an election year in the United States and I, I I wouldn't be surprised seeing something like this come up as an issue well we're you know we're I, I we'll find out we will see it and it's a tough it's a tough conversation to have I mean I have friends in that marketplace I've been to China twice and but, but I, as I look at, into the marketplace and, and you start hearing the rhetoric and it's, and it's really ramping up, you know, there has to be, you know, resources <laughs> available if and when the time comes where there's a complete ban on it. And who knows if that'll happen, but I, I, th- I, I would not be surprised by it. And so I was just curious on that. Is there anything you want to add in, in, the, in the marketplace? I mean, what, 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 what can the dealers take from today's video that they really need to pay attention to, I guess? Uh, well, I would say the most important thing is with the supply chain crisis that this situation really isn't over. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you may have times where things seem to be catching up and they're improving, uh, but this is going to be a problem that's still going to be going on, you know, into early next year uh, easily. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see how things are looking at the end of the year. But uh, the point is, is that when there's a problem with uh, delivery on certain toners or equipment, nobody really knows exactly when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I I would say for your most important products or supply products, make sure that you're prepared, make sure that you have some emergency stock available. Don't wait until the last minute uh, because, uh, you know, we, we've already, we've already gone through and seen that happen. And, uh, you know, like you said, not to, pick on Konica Minolta, but I think recently they just had a meeting and had a lot of coverage, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, videos of some of the speeches. And, you know, they openly explained to their dealers that from the supply chain and delivery situation, that this is going to be a big hurdle and a problem that they're going to have to deal with through the rest of this year, possibly even longer. And, you know, it's it, it, it's not that much different for Konica Minolta in that area than it is any other OEM. Mm-hmm. It could be good for you in the direct operations because they did say that they were going to give 75% to the dealers, 25% to the directs. So hopefully if the directs need some supplies, they can reach out to you. It's going to be an interesting, crazy world, Chris. Maybe, but uh, even with the independent dealers, when they get a lot of machines in too, once you send those machines out, you've got to send toner with them. So if they're going to flood the... uh, you know, if the market's going to get flooded with a bunch of new equipment coming in when they have to send the toners to go out with, with them, you've got to think that there's going to be a drain on the supply of those toners. And we could be looking back uh, right at a crisis on toner availability like we've seen on and off throughout the whole year. I think we got a ways to go because, Chris, yeah. everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer of all it will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see you all tomorrow.